Hey everyone, welcome back to the Rat Race Rebellion YouTube channel. I'm Chris Durst, co-founder of RatRaceRebellion.com. Today, I want to dive into a topic that can be pretty crucial to job seekers who are really looking for something that's going to give them long-term job satisfaction. Something that fills their cup and not just their wallet, if you know what I mean. Um, and it may or may not be your time to do that. I understand that a lot of people who are looking for jobs now and since the beginning of time are looking primarily because right now they need that financial injection. Um, and sometimes that means that we have to dive into what is going to help us in that regard the very most. If, however, you are at a point in your life where maybe you're looking for a career change or you're currently working a job that is just not giving you enough satisfaction, then this may be for you. And I'm going to introduce you to a workbook that we've put together here at Rat Race Rebellion. Um, it is free. It's downloadable. It's on the Rat Race Rebellion website, and I'm leaving the URL in the description below this video. Um, but we've found through our years of working with job seekers, and we've been at this for 25 years. We started in 1999 helping people find remote work. And one thing that we hear again and again um, is so many people have worked in a series of jobs that just haven't brought them any satisfaction, but perhaps even worse, they've worked in jobs to make a paycheck that um, at the end of the day don't support their core values, their personal values. So while they're bringing in money, they're at odds with themselves because they're they're working in things that don't support who they are at the very core and that's what the values based job search is all about it is um we're here to help you find jobs through the rat race rebellion site and through our course and through this youtube channel but we want to make sure that when it's your time to choose a career that you want for a long time that's going to give you satisfaction um that you can do that. So assuming it's your time, let's dive in and talk about this values-based job search, um, how to size up your core values. A lot of us, we have all these values and we have no idea how to give them a voice or how to identify them. And that's what this workbook and this process is all about. So I'm going to give you sort of a quick run through of what that workbook looks, looks like. Um, and uh, then I will send you off to the URL where you can download it and dive in for yourself. So let's get started. The values-based job search workbook is going to take you through a series of exercises. Um, and of course, we go through and we explain why it's important. But I think that this image kind of puts it all in a nutshell. Until you find that job that gives you satisfaction, you're likely to follow this cycle. You search for a job. You find a job. You accept the job. You work at the job. You hate the job. And you go back to, you search for the job, you find a job, and round and round. It's kind of this vicious circle or cycle. Um, and unfortunately, it just leaves people feeling kind of empty. I think all of us at some point in our lives have worked a job where we knew before we even went in on the first day, we were not going to enjoy this job, but it was going to put food on the table and a roof over our heads. Um, and that's fine. That is fine. And we all have that point in our lives where that's a necessity. Um, but wouldn't it be wonderful if you could find something where you were looking forward to going in on the first day and every day thereafter because you felt good about what you were doing. Um, so we take you through the process. Um, and we start off with what 
are your values? What, what, what matters most to you? What makes you feel happy and fulfilled? And how do you define success? Because everybody defines success in a different way. For some people, money is a priority. That's a value. Their finances are a value. For others, it's family as a top value. And I'm not saying you can't have both of those. You'll see we're going to have you select your top six, ultimately your top six values, and then work from there. So we're going to be sort of ranking them as we go along um, and using that, weaving that into your values-based job search. So we start off by giving you some of the core values that we've seen people mention over the years. Um, and you can see they have a range, everything from power and authority to intuition and empathy and close relationships and working with children and professional development and money. Um, intellectual stimulation. I mean, it runs the gamut because different things are valued by different people. So the first thing we want you to do is go through and indicate those that you feel are there in a high priority. And you'll probably have dozens of them. I believe we have about a hundred of them on this list. And we've given you a couple of spaces down here at the bottom where you can plug in a few more as well. So you'll start off with that. We want you to take those and transfer those 12 values into the lines that we've given you here. And then it gets a little bit harder. Because of those 12, we want you to funnel those down and select only six, those six that are most important to you. And that doesn't mean that you can't have more than six, but you can't prioritize every value. So choose the ones that are the most important to you. So we're going to put them through a funnel and then drop your six most important core values onto these lines. And that becomes the basis for the exercises that you're going to be doing going forward. All right. We have a couple of examples in here of what we call personal values statements. So this is where you're going to put everything into a nutshell. Um, it's one thing to say that um, continuous learning is one of my core values. It's another thing to be able to explain why that is. Um, so what we've done here is we've given you two different PVS or personal value statements to take a look at. And these are actually written by people who have been through a couple of our courses early on. The first one was written by a 45 year old man who has decided that some of his career choices he's made over the years, um, though they provided a healthy income, have ultimately cost him too much in his personal life. And we'll see how his personal value statement reflects his feelings about those past choices and his hopes for the future. The second one is written by a 25-year-old woman who's living in a location where everyone seems to have more than she does. And at this time and place in her life, she seeks prestige and material outcomes most of all. And there's nothing wrong with her identifying that. At this point in her life, that's what is core to her. So um, with as with the first example, you'll see how she's crafted statements that cut to the chase and give a realistic picture of what she wants to accomplish through her career. So, so you can see how that unfolds. Um, the first one, the man who's decided that he has pushed aside what's really important to him now, and that is family, um, for his career, and he's trying to re-navigate, come up with a different course for this next career move for him. Um, and at 45 years old, he's probably thinking that this is, might be the one that I stay with until I retire, or at least it's a major stepping stone. So with regard to money, he says, money is my servant, not my master. So he's in that mindset. I will seek to keep myself free of debts and pay obligations as soon as possible. I will strive to increase my income, but not, however, by increasing my workload to the point where I neglect my family. 
And then the effect on his career is as a person who values money but does not place it before other important values, I am less likely to feel I must endure a job that pays well but is unfulfilling to me. So boom, he's identified um, this one value. It is one of his values, but it's not one that he wants to put at the top of the heap. So he understands it's important, but it's no longer the top priority. Um, and then he decides how that affects him going forward. So his next value was service. And he says, I, I will strive for excellence in, in anticipating and responding to the requirements of the people I serve. And the effect on his career is by serving customers well, I also serve my employer well. Providing excellent service to customers will allow me to feel proud of my work while helping me gain the respect of my managers. Thus, I will have greater opportunities for career progression in the company. The third one, and I remember this man being in our workshop, and the dignity part was really important to him because he had been um, in subordinate roles, um, unfortunately, under people who didn't treat him or his colleagues with the most respect. So dignity made his list, as did integrity, because there were some issues there as well. So with regard to dignity, he says, I will recognize and affirm each and every person as a unique individual worthy of respect and compassion. The effect on his career, dignity is a quiet confidence, not proud or bullying but a knowing of one's priorities and values and worth. As a person of dignity, I'm fully aware that the success of one is the success of all, making me an invaluable and respected team member. I love that. I just, I love that. I've, I've read this over the years many, many times, and I still find that such a profound insight that this man had into who he is. With regard to t integrity, he says, I will build each relationship on honesty and trust, delivering on my promises and treating everyone with fairness. And the effect on his career? As a person of integrity, I will be well-respected by my peers and managers alike. As a result, my manager will be comfortable in promoting me to a position of greater authority with little fear of turmoil. And then he goes on to wisdom, which he expands on, and then challenging problems. Um, so, and you can read these when you download the, um, the workbook, but I love that. Now, just to give you a sense of how the second person, the woman who's 25 years old and right now money and things, um, are most important to her. And again, I'm not judging. She was actually a lovely woman and she was just at that point where for her, this was a priority, okay? So with regard to money, she says, money and the status and material belongings that come with it are very important to me. I will do whatever I must to ensure a lifestyle that I will be content with. The effect on her career, as a person who understands the value of money and the things it can bring, I am willing to work long hours and commit myself fully to my work. I am also willing to endure performing tasks I do not care for if I am well compensated for my efforts. Vastly different from the 45-year-old man above her um, in the previous example. With regard to service, she says, I will strive to serve the company's customers according to the standards established by the company. The effect on career, by serving customers well, I will earn the confidence of my managers and will likely be promoted to a position with more authority and greater compensation. So again, that very um, money-driven. Dignity, I will treat others as I expect to be treated myself with dignity and respect. The effect on her career, by treating others with dignity, I will earn the respect of my managers and coworkers. Through this, my managers will be more likely to promote me and my coworkers will be less likely to resent my growth within the organization. 
All right, that makes sense. And again, she goes through with integrity, wisdom, and challenging problems. All right, so we then have you, after reading their examples, we'll have you go through and write your own. So you've identified your six core values. So you'll drop one of those into each of these sheets. Um, you'll write your value statement. That's the first part. Um, and then the effect on your career. So we've given you the sheets to do that on. The next thing we want you to do is to take those six core values and assess your values gaps. That is, where what is your ideal um, level? Uh, on a scale of one to 10, what is your ideal position for this value? And what is your current? What's the reality and what's the desired location? So to give you an example, at the base of this person's pyramid are two of their values, flexibility and security. They've indicated that for security, their reality is currently two. And their ideal is 10. So they have an eight point value gap in there, um, which means they've got to look for something. If 10 is really their ideal for security, they have to find a job that's going to help them close that gap. For flexibility, they've indicated that they're currently at a level four and their ideal is a level eight. So there's less of a gap there, but still something that needs to be closed down. Now, you're not going to want every value to be a 10. I mean, we can't, we can't generally have that kind of, um, balance in our lives where everything is utopian. Um, and besides, everything gets a different weight. So for me, for example, family is 10. That's always going to be right up there at the top. Um, for some people, um, you may have family and spirituality will be right up there vying for the top tens. Um, but again, everybody gives different weight to their core values. So we've given you a pyramid here where you're going to drop in your six core values that you've identified in these bricks at the base of the pyramid. And then really give some thought to, for each one of those values, where are you now? In the job that you're in or in your life generally, you can make multiple pyramids. You can make one that is general life specific and one that is career specific. And a lot of people end up doing that because they like the exercise and they, they understand that there's a value to doing this. We've had couples who have decided that they want to do one as a family. So they have a family period, they, a pyramid. They work together to come up with six mutual values that they share as a family. And then they sit down and together, the, the spouses, the partners, the children who are old enough to participate, sit down and talk about those values and how they're supporting them within their home. And it's a brilliant exercise. I know couples who have put that onto their refrigerator um, and work toward it every day. So now that you've identified those values gaps, it becomes a process of what steps do you need to take to close those up? And you may not be able to close them all the way, but what do you have to do to at least narrow those gaps a little bit so that you can find greater satisfaction? All right. So we also find that um, interests are important. Okay. So when you're looking for that work-life balance, when you're looking for a job um, or a career that's going to sustain you in a meaningful way, um, doing things that also appeal to your, your interests, things that you daydream about, um, things that persist with you over the years, things that you just always come back to. That can be really important too when you're considering the career paths um, that you take. And you may or may not be able to find something that directly feeds into those interests, um, but maybe something that runs vertical and helps to support that. So we also ask people, 
these questions. If you had some spare time, what would you do? Right now, probably take a nap, but usually, <laughs> usually what would you do? What arouses your curiosity and triggers your enthusiasm? What do you enjoy doing most? What types of activities do you enjoy participating in? Do you enjoy group activities or do you prefer working alone? And you can see how some of these play into career choices. What hobbies do you actively pursue? Do you enjoy outdoor activities or do you prefer indoors? What courses did you most enjoy in school? Raise your hand if you said recess and lunch. <laughs> that was definitely me. Um, when you fantasize about a career, what do you think you would enjoy doing? And then what do you dislike? What do you really dislike doing? Because honestly, that's pretty important too. Um, and then we give you some essential questions, just things that help you further pinpoint. Do you like working with machines and tools? Are you great at fixing and mending? Do you see yourself as being practical? Um, do you like staying fit? Are you artistic? Um, do you like things to be orderly? Are you an organizer? So different types of things here that will help you, again, further fine tune and really think about who you are as a person so that when you're looking at companies and you're looking at job descriptions, you can ask yourself, does this align with who I am as a person? We then take you into the skills. So those abilities that you have to do something well. Um, and we all have different skill sets, of course. And what's interesting to me is, a lot of times we don't know all of the things that we're great at, and we'll get to that a little bit further into this. Um, but I just always find it interesting. Sometimes I'm talking to people and um, they're, they're trying to talk about what they're good at. And I'm listening to them and I'm realizing you don't have a clue. You are so much better at so many things than you give yourself credit for. Um, so when you're doing these exercises, try to have an out-of-body experience. Try to think about what other people tell you about yourself um, and sort of stack that on top of what you are confident you're really good at as well. So we've given you some thought starters here, um, but we've also given you some blank spaces. These are just sort of just trying to get the, the juices flowing as far as skills. So... Um, you can see here, you know, working with nature, working with animals, um, advising and influencing, prioritizing, planning, deciding. Um, so we're giving you a bunch of different ones here. Uh, again, just thought starters. And then, of course, free form. Do what you have to to make sure that you're capturing the essence of who you are at the core and what you bring to the table and what delights you. All right. And then this is what this sheet is for. We want you to give you to, to put together your own skills inventory. All right. And we've given you plenty of space to do that as well. Um, sorry, just scrolled ahead too far there. All right. Now, as far as exploring career options that fit your skills, your interests and your values. This is where the rubber hits the road. You've done these exercises. You've determined what your values are, what your values gaps are, what your skills are, um, and what your interests are. And you're looking for that place where these things all converge and the harps start playing and you find the ideal job. Um, and, you know, it may take a while before you're able to find exactly that job, but we want you to start to brainstorm and then make a game plan. All right. And we want you to come up with several different career options. And this is not going to be a one sitting, sit down and figure out, but make this your, your dream list. Make it realistic, but your dream list of coming up with the top three career options that you would like to pursue. All right. And then you can measure them and see how they fit with those values, your interests and your skills. 
And we've given you worksheets for that, and we're asking you some job fit questions along the way. So you're just going to drop the career title in here, whatever it is you've decided for career option number one, and then go through and ask yourself these questions. Do your strongest motiv motivations for listing this job come from your interests, your values, and your skills? Are outside pressures, like from family and peers and the job market shaping and influencing you to pursue this kind of work? Would your motivation in this job be strong enough to enable you to succeed in the position? Is this your dream job? Will this job satisfy your career desires for the long term? With, uh, will this job serve more as a short-term stepping stone to help you achieve your long-term objectives. So we're asking you a bunch of questions here that will help you as you work through them. If, if you're ending up with a lot of no's and not too many yeses, then you can probably push that one aside. Yes, you identified it. Yes, it's kind of a dream job. You can either push it aside or strive to make it a better fit, but don't strive to make it a better fit if you've identified it for all of the wrong reasons. But we are asking you what new skills and experience would you need, if any, to secure that type of position? Because at the end of the day, that might be what you need to do. Maybe you're a close fit, but not an exact fit. And then in the interest of being realistic, um, how can you learn more about options available in this employment area? And what are your barriers to securing this type of position, if any? And how do you overcome them? And who can assist you in your pursuit of this type of work? In other words, who are your allies? And then we have you repeat that for your areas of interest, your identified jobs um, for job two and job three. And then this step is critically important. And I alluded to this earlier. Asking friends and families where they see your best job fit. Um, assuming that you have good friends and family who really know you and have your best interests at heart. Because as I said, a lot of times we miss factors about ourselves. We miss some of our best traits. Sometimes it's self-blindness. Sometimes it's um, being overly humble. Um, but sometimes other people have a much better idea of how they see us. So ask them, ask them what they think and tell them to be really candid with you. And then we've given the, you these sheets where you can say, you know, so-and-so, mom feels I should consider working as fill in the blank because, and just gather that information from a few people because we really feel like um, it can be, it, it really is interesting to see yourself from other people's perspective. It can be really enlightening um, and really buoying. A lot of times we don't realize that people see us in such a positive light um, until we come out and ask them. Um, and when you're asking those questions, a lot of times it's hard because people are they're, they're trying to tell you wonderful things about yourself. And if you're really self-effacing, um, a lot of times it turns into this, oh, you know, we got, we go all goofy, oh, gorsh, you know, um, and it, but it's good to hear. It's good to hear those things. Um, so anyway, yeah. And then you get into your job search. So you've identified what it is you want to go after. You have a better sense of, what your values are and how you want to support them through your career. Um, and for remote work, of course, we're hoping that you'll stop by the Rat Race Rebellion website because we do post screened legitimate work from home jobs five days a week, Monday through Friday. Um, we definitely would love to have you take our free online course, no registration. We don't even ask for your email. You don't have to log in, no strings attached. Um, you'll find that right here on our YouTube channel, as well as on our Rat Race Rebellion site, where in addition to the video, you also have a bunch of written resources, um, links and other materials that will help you uh, put all of the things that we teach you in the videos into play. 
While you're at the Rat Race Rebellion site, by the way, make sure that you subscribe to our newsletter um, because we do send that out five days a week as well. And it's a good way to make sure that you're always apprised of everything new that we've posted to the site. While we're talking about subscribing, make sure that you subscribe to this YouTube channel. Um, just click on that subscribe button that you'll see below this video. And while you're at it, click on the little bell icon because that will send you a notification every time we upload new content. That's it. Um, everybody have a wonderful day. Go over to the website, download the value space job search workbook. Um, whether you can print it out or not, even if you're looking at it online and you're using your own scrap paper at home, um, just make sure that you do it. It really is very telling. It's, it's really a great way to soul search a little bit, uh, recenter refocus um, and start taking your job search in a direction uh, that's going to be entirely different from probably what you've done before. That's it. Everybody have a wonderful day. I look forward to hearing your success stories soon. Bye-bye.